Good morning. Good morning. It's a beautiful morning. I'm glad you're here. I hope you're glad you're here. It's always exciting to be with God's people, is it not? Amen. Scripture reading today comes from Genesis chapter 32, verse 24. It says, So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. Wrestling, wrestling can be difficult. I remember when I was a sophomore in high school, I played football. Football season was over, I thought, what better way to stay in shape than to wrestle? Winter sport. Well, I soon found out that football shape and wrestling shape are two different animals. I mean, it's one thing to go up and block a guy for 10, 15 seconds, but to wrestle a guy that's almost equivalent to you for three minutes, oh, that takes a lot of stamina. It takes a lot of strength. It wasn't long before I decided that wasn't for me. <laughs> but we wrestle with things in different ways. And if, if we allow it, the struggling and wrestling we have in life can bring great rewards. Think about it. We wrestle with things every day, decisions, uh, maybe obstacles in our life. If we allow that, it can really improve the way that we live, the way we view life. They make us stronger. You know, we've all had difficulties in life to overcome. Some major, some not so major. But hopefully they have made us stronger and better. And hopefully, they focused our eyes on Jesus more, understanding that's where we get our strength. Jacob wrestled with God and received a blessing for it. That's what we want to look at today. Jacob had prepared to meet Esau. Now, Jacob had not seen his brother since he stole Esau's birthright. Now, I want you to think about this. You, you all know the story of Jacob and Esau, how Esau traded his birthright for a pot of soup, a pot of stew. And then, with the help of his mother, Jacob stole the blessing of the older son from his father Isaac. And now, they're on the verge of all these years later after Jacob had left home because Rebecca sent him away because he was afraid of what Esau was going to do to him. They're on the verge of meeting once again. Jacob knew what he had done. Jacob knew that he had taken full advantage of his brother. Jacob knew that, that he had stolen his brother's blessing. I mean, after all, he, he kind of argued with his mother, well, I shouldn't do this, and how, how's my father going to be fooled, and, and his mother helped him. So now all these years later, all he's thinking is, my brother's had all these years to figure out different ways to get even, different ways to avenge. So Jacob sends out a delegation to meet his brother. He sends out a delegation to, to just kind of get an idea of the mood of, of how Esau might be. Well, when they return, we see in, Jacob, in Genesis chapter 32 and verse 6, and it said, And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother Esau, and he's coming to meet you, and there are 400 men with him. That wouldn't be reassuring. And Jacob didn't take it as reassuring. Now here comes my brother with 400 men. The only thing Jacob could think of was Esau was coming with enough men to be sure to exact his revenge. And that kind of frightened Jacob. Now, we know that, that Jacob means deceiver. But Jacob also had to stop and think a minute. Is there anything I can do about this? Is there any way I can change my brother's mind? 
And so Jacob tries to soften up his brother a little bit. He sends Esau 200 female goats, 20 male goats, 200 ewes, 20 lambs, 30 milking camels and their calves, 40 cows, 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys, and 10 male donkeys. Now, how would you like to get that as a gift? Well, that meant something to Jacob and Esau. You know, that was a lot of livestock. That was a, a very valuable thing that Jacob is sending his brother. So I'm going to send this to him, and maybe he won't come after me. 45, Genesis 32, 20. I may appease him with the present that goes ahead of me, and afterwards I shall see his face. Perhaps he will accept me. Have you ever been in that situation? Have you ever had a conflict with someone and then you didn't see him for a long, long time and then all of a sudden you know you're going to see them? How do you feel? Are you nervous? Are you scared? I mean, imagine how Jacob must have felt his entire life knowing that one day this would probably happen. One day you would probably come face to face with this man that you wronged in so many ways. But you would come together. And you'd have to deal with it. Now, one thing about Jacob, we know that he kind of got a taste of his own medicine. He went and he, he, he fell in love with Rachel. And so he got a taste of his own medicine. But it was given to him by his father-in-law, Laban. When he fell in love with Rachel, he, he told Laban, look, I'll come and work with you for seven years if you'll give me Rachel as a bride. Laban said, no problem. Sounds good. So Jacob worked those seven years, and he was so excited, and he was, was so happy. He said it didn't even seem like seven years. And then on the wedding night, he lifts the veil and he finds Leah. Laban had given him his older daughter. Because he told me, he said, it's not customary for the younger daughter to marry first. So Jacob says, I'll tell you what, I'll work another seven years for Rachel. So he was kind of taken advantage of, like he had taken advantage of his brother.
Maybe he thought this would talk to these scholars about. He would look at his family and see all the family that Jacob had. Maybe that would soften Esau's heart. And all of his family and all of his possessions over, and he stayed behind. It almost seemed like Jacob was trying to put as much distance as he could, or as many obstacles as he could, between him and his brother. Maybe in his mind, he's just trying to delay what in his mind is the inevitable. That eventually, Esau's going to come. Eventually, Esau's going to do whatever Esau's going to do to me. But first, he's going to have to come through my family. But first, he's going to have to deal with them. A little bit delay. And so while Esau's on the, the other side of the jabbing, at night, God comes to him. God takes the form of a man and wrestles with Jacob. Now, this seems like a really strange thing for God to do. Yet it symbolizes the struggles that all mankind face. In Genesis 32, 24, it says that Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. I mean, maybe you've been in a situation, maybe there's been something on your mind, maybe there's been something happening in your life where you wrestled with it all night long. You didn't sleep. You tossed and you turned, and your mind continually went to all these scenarios, sometimes the best case, sometimes the worst case, but you wrestled with it. Jacob is wrestling with this man all night long till the breaking of day. You know, I, I think about this, and I think about my experience wrestling, and I think, wow, three minutes was a long time. What about all night into the breaking of day? How tired would you be? How exhausted would you be? What is God trying to prove to Jacob? That he can deal with it? But like all struggles, we can either give up or we can overcome. The choice is ours. Jacob chose to overcome. He chose to continue to fight all night long. But the man could not overpower Jacob. So there they were in a stalemate. There they were. Neither one winning. It seems that the match had become a draw. <coughs> Genesis 32, 25, and when the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Now, that hardly seems fair. You can't beat me, so you're going to hurt me. But it's amazing. It's amazing. Jacob still didn't stop. He's in this pain. But Jacob continued to wrestle. Look at the next verse, verse 26. Then he said, let me go, for day is broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Think about that in the context of our wrestles and our struggles when we're thinking about all these things going on in our life. Sometimes we just walk away. But we can be like Jacob, and maybe we can go to God and say, God, I'm not going to let this go until you bless me. I mean, what was it that Jacob was wanting? Do we know? We don't know what kind of blessing he was asking for. We don't know exactly what he wanted. But even in great pain, Jacob was not going to give up. He was going to continue wrestling with this issue until he was blessed. That's getting through the 
that's how God blesses us when we wrestle with issues, when we wrestle with stress, when we struggle with all those things in life. God will bless us when we get through. And, and yeah, sometimes, you know what? There's pain involved. Sometimes there's pain involved in order to overcome these issues. You know, God never tells us that he's going to take the obstacles in our life away. He never tells us that. He tells us he'll get us through them. He'll help us to overcome them. Now, if there's never any difficult times in life, we will never be shaped. We will never get tough. We will never get stronger. We will never be able to overcome anything. So there's got to be both good and bad. I mean, if there was never any bad, how would we know what was good? But God will get us through it. God will bless us. Jacob challenges for this blessing, and we need to too. And God will bless us, even when we're going through great pain. We need to know that God is still there and willing to bless us. This whole event shaped Jacob. Jacob was shaped by God through this. God used this event to mold Jacob into the patriarch he needed to be. Think about that. It was through Jacob that the 12 tribes of Israel would come, and from the tribe of Judah would come Jesus. God's promised Messiah. Now we know that even after this event, everything Jacob done wasn't perfect. I mean, that's a great thing when we look at God's people, we see all these great people we read about in the Bible that we look up to as, as God's spiritual people, as God's great servants. We look up to them. None of them were perfect, but Jesus and God still used them. So what's that say for us? God can still use us. And God understands that we will make mistakes. That's why Jesus came to earth. That's why Jesus died on the cross. To cleanse us of our sins. It was at this time that, that God changed Jacob's name to Israel. And then he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Israel literally means struggles with God. It seems kind of ironic, doesn't it, that God's chosen people, their name actually means struggles with God. You'd like to think their name would mean pleasing to God, obedient to God. God's chosen people, but no, struggles with God. And friends, sometimes we do, don't we? Because we don't always know God's plan. We don't see the big picture like God does. We don't always know what is going on in his mind. And we may have an idea of what we want, but God has a whole different plan. And that's sometimes when we struggle with God. God, why'd you go in this direction when I think we should be going that direction? 